Alrighty, I think we can go ahead and kick things off. So thank you everyone for joining and welcome to today's AMA. We're thrilled to have you all here to discuss the exciting developments in Horizon 2.0 and its impact on the blockchain space, especially focusing on zero knowledge applications. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a brief introduction to both of our speakers. So today we have Rob Viglioni, uh, co-founder of Horizon and CEO of Horizon Labs, as well as Domenico Cusimano, who's a senior product manager at Horizon Labs. Uh, maybe Rob, if you want to start us off with a brief intro, and then we'll pass it over to Dom. Uh, yeah, sure, Brian. Uh, happy to do that. Um, I mean, like Brian said, I'm co-founder of Horizon I'm way back in the day when we were Zen Cash uh, in 2016 when we started the idea, in 2017 when we launched it. Um, quick history of me uh, for my background is I, I was um, started my professional career originally a physicist and mathematician uh, working with the U.S. government in, in Air, For Air Force's Space Command or what was back then Space Command. Um, then ended up leaving uh, government work and got into academia where uh, because I was relatively early into the Bitcoin world, I was able to actually study um, Bitcoin and crypto from uh, like a financial economics perspective where I got my P my PhD dissertation in crypto finance and then launched uh, Zencash with Rolf, who I think a lot of you guys know. So um, that's my background in a nutshell. And there's a lot going on these days uh, with Horizon 2.0 and some of the other technologies that we're bringing to bear. But ultimately, what I can say is the organization that I'm leading right now is just super focused on ZK. And you'll get a lot of that and the story that we're going to share with you guys today about Horizon 2.0. So Dom, uh, over to you. Hey guys, um, Senior Product Manager here at Horizon Labs. I have been uh, working in the tech space for quite some time building applications um, across various industry sectors. I got uh, very attracted to crypto about four years ago, uh, very much wanted to work in the industry. I uh, worked on some smart co contract applications, um, uh, staking applications here at Horizon Labs, uh, and now in as part of our services to the foundation, I've been tasked with uh, managing the build out of uh, Horizon Two. Um, part of part of that is also being trying to be as well versed as possible in a, a very new. Uh, uh, fast moving space, which is ZK, and basically doing as much research as we can to uh, iron out what the, the user journey is, who, who the target audience is, and proposing uh, possible developments that the, that, uh, the Horizon uh, Foundation and, and community should be adding to their, uh, to their roadmap and uh, uncovering you know, market potential or unserved needs. So really focused on that. And, um, you know, hopefully the, the community agrees on whatever, um, or likes everything that we've been putting together so far as, as part of this plan. So, uh, that's, that's it for me. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you both. And before we dive into the AMA, I just wanted to provide a brief background. So, Today's AMA is all about exploring the future of Horizon with the next-gen EVM designed specifically for ZK apps. We'll cover the history of Horizon, the advancements brought on by Horizon 2.0, and how these developments are shaping the future of blockchain technology. We aim to provide a comprehensive understanding of how Horizon 2.0 boosts ZK efficiency and enhances scalability, making Horizon a leading platform for ZK apps. To start, let's take a brief look at the history of Horizon. As Rob mentioned earlier, Horizon originally launched as Zencash back in 2017 and has grown from a privacy-focused cryptocurrency to a comprehensive blockchain platform. The core mission of Horizon has always been to provide an ecosystem that prioritizes scalability, security, and ZK. Over the years, Horizon has introduced numerous innovations, including sidechain technology, to enhance its capabilities and support a, a wide range of dApps. Now let's dive in and talk about Horizon 2.0. So to get us started, I'd like to pass it over to Rob to provide some high-level strategic insights around Horizon 2.0, how we got here, and the overall vision and goals for Horizon 2.0. Sure. Uh, so Brian, I, I like how you went through quickly our history because 
Um, there's a through line to everything they were doing to how we got to where we are right now with Horizon 2. Uh, I also like how Dom calls it Horizon 2 instead of 2.0. I, I think that's, um, it, it, it shows that where we've come from is, is really anchored in ZK technology. And it started with being, you know, the application of ZK being a privacy coin with Zen Cash. Um, but then we built out uh, this idea that we could do a lot more as thinking in terms of like a bigger ecosystem. So yes, a cryptocurrency is at the heart of, you know, what we would consider maybe, a, you know, by ecosystem, maybe like a, like a digital economy in a way. You could look at these ecosystems that we're building as kind of like their own little economies, like a, like the, I don't know, Balaji um, kind of network state concept. And at the heart of it is a cryptocurrency. And that was the first product that was created by the Zen Cash community. Um, but then we had a much bigger vision. And the vision was to apply this technology to a whole bunch of other um, products and services that could you know, support um, you know, a range of different application types, everything like it. And like the ideas that we had in 2017 were probably a little crazy compared to where we are today in terms of how the industry has evolved. But some of those ideas were actually spot on. Some of those ideas were around how we do um, kind of decentralized governance. How do we coordinate uh, many community members all over the world and kind of an uh, anonymous fashion to participate in these online communities and have a voice and not just a voice, but actually make that voice mean something. Um, so just to fast forward where we are now, I, Brian covered the main points of technology development of, of how we thought we would get there. Um, but what I'll say is the industry evolved such that um, for most um, dApps, most decentralized applications and dApp devs, they work on EVMs, these Ethereum virtual machines. It's just, it, it's, um, you know, a, a very common standard now that we see in the industry, and it's not the, the be all end all, and probably the industry will evolve to other types of virtual machines and kind of programming interfaces that people use for app development. But the reality is today, EVMs dominate, and there's this EVM standard for smart contract or for, you know, DAP development using smart contracts. And that's exactly what we're tooling Horizon 2 to be now is to basically take this through line of working in the privacy segment, the working with zero knowledge proof technology to now have an EVM that's optimized exactly for that. So it really just takes all of the lessons learned over the years and thinking, uh, what's that gap in the market in Web3 that Horizon can charge into and fill and actually be the best at and tooling everything around that. So rather than just kind of taking what we have as a given and just keep doing the same thing forever, right? It's you know, let's actually uh, take an honest assessment of the industry as it stands today versus the industry in 2017 uh, and think, how do we participate as, uh, as an ecosystem in the most meaningful way possible that's still consistent with the values and vision that we had from the very beginning? And that's exactly why I'm so excited for, well, one of one of the, the core reasons for why I'm so excited for Horizon 2, uh, and then Dom can get into a lot more of the specifics of what I mean exactly by tooling an EVM to be you know, optimized for ZK applications. Um, that's what we're doing here. And I think there's a really exciting story. There's an exciting through line of how we got to where we are right now. But I think the future is actually the really cool stuff. And we're going to talk about that. Um, or I'll, I'll hand it over to Dom to actually get into more of the details. Yeah, thanks. So um, just to like introduce, uh, uh, I guess, why we're uh, very bullish on ZK, I, I sort of think of ZK as uh, very related to the pro solving this, the similar problems that blockchain itself is, is solving. And that's with uh, the fact that when you use blockchain, you don't need to trust any centralized entity. And what ZK is sort of doing, is it's also... Uh, providing a tool for uh, users to not necessarily need to, tr uh, like, to ba basically provide trust, but not need to trust each other. So that them sort of working together uh, could really enhance the limitations that blockchain currently has. I think there's, there's a lot of new developments and use cases that are going to be used for ZK uh, and, and blockchain on decentralized ledgers. Um so there's like a lot of positive momentum uh, moving in this space. Uh, and a lot of use cases have yet to really be defined uh, for which ZK will solve problems for. Um, yeah, and that that's 
uh, sort of what we're working towards is to be, be able to provide essentially an ecosystem where uh, uh, you don't have the limitations you currently have with trying to build applications that require ZK uh, proof verification, uh, which uh, we feel as though is going to be something that is going to be very relevant uh, in many of the applications that are going to be built in the future. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Dom and Rob. And um, Dom, to, to stay with you, um, can you please provide kind of a brief overview of the development progress so far for Horizon 2? You know, what is actively being worked on by the dev team and some near-term uh, roadmap items that we're going to be working on? Yeah, so uh, if anybody hasn't seen it, we uh, released the first draft of the white paper. Uh, I think any every anybody who's interested in uh, the, the, the technolo technological advancements that we're working on, that we're actively building, uh, to please read that because it goes in depth about what uh, Horizon 2 is going to be. Um, now, it, uh, when a timeline was originally proposed to the DAO, uh, we're essentially on track based on all the work streams that we originally provided. In that, in that timeline, we have added things to that as well, but the team is right now actively working on creating the power chain uh, for Horizon 2. We're also actively working on the snapshot and restore uh, for uh, to, so just to support the migration of Zen when the new chain is in, uh, uh, launched. Um, we're also actively working on building out the EVM uh, of the chain. So uh, what we hope to do is provide uh, on a monthly basis an AMA to provide uh, more updates on development progress uh, and we're essentially uh, moving along at the same timeline that we originally provided um, uh, in, in, the, in the proposal. Amazing, amazing. And um, now we're going to go ahead and dive into some of the community questions that we've gotten across Twitter, Telegram, Discord, and the type form. Um, these are in no particular order, so I'll kind of just address them to either Dom or Rob, but either of you, please feel free to, to jump in and add anything to any of them. So the first question we have here is, are there any spe uh, specific instructions for super node operators for the upgrade to Horizon 2? Is there a deadline for the transition? How will unwinding super nodes rapidly affect the current Horizon main chain? And will the legacy super node rewards be transitioned to a new network incentive in Horizon 2? Cool. So I, I, I could take this one. Um, I think it'll be important to first just understand what the process would be and the differences between, uh, I guess, like super nodes. Uh, super nodes are there for uh, mining, but in the new chain, there will, it will be a proof of stake chain where there will be forgers. So there's a little bit of a difference uh, between how blocks are created in the two chains. Now, um, something to understand as part of like the process of how we're going to migrate uh, from Horizon, uh, both Horizon and Eon as it is now, to Horizon 2. Um, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have a snapshot at a certain period of time. We'll be um, preparing the community of when that snapshot will take place. Uh, once the snapshot does take place, the at that block height, all of the smart contract uh, state as well as account states will be able to be maintained on the new chain. Um, so as far as like transitioning super nodes, uh, they will be relevant up until that snapshot. Once the snapshot is taken, they will no longer be relevant, and we would advise you know. Uh, then all super nodes to, to shut down after that. Um, and then everything on the new chain will be available to users. So uh, it there will be a new incentive structure for uh, people who want to participate in a network. Uh, it won't be through mining. It will be through staking. So we will be providing instruction. If you would like to create a, no a node, which is called a collator node, 
you could uh, participate in, uh, you know, uh, preparing blocks for the network, and you will receive an incentive for that. And then you could also delegate uh, to a collator node, uh, similar to how uh, you delegate on Eon right now. So those would be the two incentives for participating in a network, essentially. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Dom. And while we're on the topic of nodes, I wanted to kind of switch gears a bit and touch on Forger nodes. So for users that are currently staking or running Forger nodes on Eon, kind of what does their um, path look like to prepare for the Horizon 2 upgrade? Um, is there anything that they should be aware of as they prepare in relation to the ZKV token claim eventually, or you know, any actions that they should take in preparation? Yeah, so um, all, all the Zen that a user has ownership of will be able to be used for a ZKV uh, uh, claim. Um, we're still sort of working out what the strategy is for there, but for end users, it wouldn't really uh, change all that much. Uh, the proposal is likely what's likely going to happen is that all of the uh, all of the Zen that's currently being staked uh, will likely be unstaked, and it, it could be done automatically. And all of the Zen could be that a user did did have staked prior could be sent back to their addresses, and they'll be able to use that for whatever purpose they they'd like on the new chain. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Dom. And to jump into the next question, um, for users that hold their Zen on Coinbase, Binance, and other exchanges, what do they need to do to best prepare for the um, Horizon 2 upgrade? Yeah, so uh, as part of our, um, as part of us supporting the ecosystem, we're in contact with uh, the exchanges um, to prepare for uh, the migration. And essentially, theoretically, like end users shouldn't really have to do anything to prepare there. Um, but, you know, each centralized exchange operates a little differently. And, you know, they may require users to do something. Uh, but uh, from our perspective, if, if all the wallets are managed uh, accordingly, and users wouldn't have to do anything. Thank you. Thank you, Dom. Um, to kind of switch gears a bit, so we received a question around ZK Verify and Horizon. So currently, the communities are a bit fragmented. In the future, when the chains are rolled out, will there be a solution to make the communities less fragmented? Can you provide more of an overview of how Horizon 2 and ZK Verify will work together moving forward and the, the unique benefits that a native ZK Verify integration provides for Horizon 2? Where do you want to handle that, Brian? Well, let's just take a step since I'm talking. <laughs> so, um, okay, um, both both of these projects are, um, so they both they share similar visions, but they are separate and distinct. Let, let's be clear about that. So zk verify, its core mission in life, its sole purpose is to verify zk proofs. Um, Horizon two, like we're talking about here, its core mission is to be uh, an optimized EVM for zk applications. Um, so there's a really interesting point of overlap there that allows us um, to basically join these communities at the point of technology, and then also to join the communities on other dimensions. And, and um, you know, some of these things, so just from starting from the architecture and what the Horizon 2 paper um, makes clear is that Horizon 2 is, is being launched as a parachain on top of ZK Verify. Um, so the point of that is that it'll have like, a native access to the, the verification layer which gives it a big competitive advantage when it comes to ZK applications because they'll be able to basically have this universal verification layer. So all different types of cryptography, all different types of proof systems will be able to use uh, natively uh, ZK Verify. So, so that's kind of a point of competitive advantage. Now in the other direction, what does that do for ZK Verify is it gives ZK Verify an EVM on top of it because ZK Verify is not an EVM, ZK Verify is a very stripped down optimized verification layer for ZK proofs. Um, but having an EVM now gives it access to the rest of Web3 in really interesting ways. 
Um, so that rather than you know, like the substrate based architecture that we have for ZK Verify itself would have a tough time with uh, integrating with the rest of Web3 without having an EVM. So there's this really nice symbiotic relationship there. And yes, there. so th there's a really good reason from like a strategic positioning and the, this value proposition that we get by combining the two different systems. But they are two different systems and they have two different communities. Um, but obviously, um, they have this overlapping community that's interested in ZK. And that's the important point. So what we can do and like some of this is still TBD in terms of tokenomics and and plans that we have for you know proposing to to each of the communities on how they could work together. But some ideas would be things like joint grant programs, right? So that we can get um, applications incentivized to build on this joint ecosystem, leveraging both technologies uh, and actually benefit um, in a joint way. Um, there's talk of an airdrop with the tokenomics uh, as zkv. Um, goes to goes into production, there will very likely be a token, and that token, uh, I think, to align communities, it makes sense to have an airdrop to Zen holders, right? So more details uh, forthcoming on proposals around that. But there's a bunch of different ways that we can align the communities. But let's also just keep in mind that they are distinct. All right, they they will have their own distinct roadmaps, their own paths. But there's this really nice overlapping point that in combination they just make for a really competitive uh, system for ZK applications and basically anyone that generates a ZK proof to leverage both systems and combination. So I don't know, Don, if you have anything else you wanted to add to that. Yeah, I think that was said perfectly. I, I didn't have much to add. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Rob. And for the next question, um, you know, I'll start it off with Dom and then Rob, if there's anything additional to add, please feel free to jump in. Um, when do we envision centralized exchanges will integrate the Horizon 2 network? So uh, in our capacity as like service providers, again, uh, to Horizon, we're assisting it with open lines of communication with the exchanges to make sure that they have everything that they need to be ready uh, when, when the, for the migration of Horizon. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Dom. And uh, this next question, I'll direct it over to Rob. And the question is, will Horizon Labs perform buyback on Zen if Horizon Labs gets good earnings? Um, so, okay, this is a good opportunity to just talk about what is Horizon Labs. Because um, Horizon Labs is a, a for-profit company that basically uh, early team members and community members in the Horizon ecosystem got together years ago, uh, back in 2019, and you know just realized that we need a little bit more organization structure here to just get some things done. Um, you know, because it, and this is also, I think, a key part of having a decentralized ecosystem is that you can actually have, you know, many spontaneous, you know, formations of people and organizations that pop up and exist and, and kind of um, you know, figure out how they're going to maintain their own operations to contribute to the ecosystem. It's exactly what Horizon Labs is. Uh, so Horizon Labs, we raised VC funding um, to you know, basically people that wanted to support the Horizon ecosystem but wanted to do it in a more organized way. Uh, pitched in capital, we, we launched this company. Um, the, the difference between Horizon Labs and kind of Labs Co's of other ecosystems, you know, from popular L1s, is that Horizon Labs didn't exist when Horizon launched, actually. Horizon Labs was a spontaneous creation of people that were interested in you know, developing in a more organized way on Horizon. And we raised you know, external capital, not from um, the ecosystem directly. So the, the difference is um, Horizon Labs did not form with some big endowment or allocation of Zen, like other labs codes and other ecosystems did. So now it, that's really good in some ways and, and put us at a bit of a disadvantage in other ways in that you know, like Horizon Labs, because we're not sitting on a large treasury of Zen that was just given to us upon launch, uh, or not given, but like earned upon launch, um, it, every Zen that Horizon Labs owns, and we own a, you know, a decent chunk of, of Zen, uh, we actually went out into the market and bought. Um, and we did that with capital that was in our balance sheet, with revenues that we've made over the years. Um, but that's all owned by a private entity, guys. <laughs> that's all owned by a private entity that is committed to, you know, uh, contributing to this ecosystem. Uh, but we're also, 
committed to fostering, you know, healthy decentralization of this ecosystem. Uh, so that's why we've been very careful with how much Zen we've bought um, and what we do with that Zen and how we participate in governance and so forth. And we try to be really good stewards of this ecosystem. But now that was a long winded way of basically providing the background to answer the question, because the reality is that there's no um, kind of organizational, there's no contractual um, or like automatic relationship of it. if Horizon Labs does well, it's going to go and like buy Zen. <laughs> that, that, that's a corporate decision. And, um, you know, certainly it wouldn't buy Zen and burn it or anything like that. Um, so, so no, there, there's no you know, like automatic plan for if, if revenues for Horizon Labs go up, will we buy more Zen? Maybe, maybe not, but that's going to be a corporate decision. And we're going to do it also in a way that we constrain ourselves to be good stewards of this ecosystem by like, I, I would say it's not healthy for any ecosystem where a single organization owns a, you know, like a controlling stake of the token, the governance token. And Zen is our governance token. So, I mean, we, we definitely want to have a big stake. We really believe in this ecosystem and we want to support it in every way we can, but we're primarily builders and service providers. Um, and we also constrain ourselves by not owning a disproportionate um, amount of Zen so that we're going to just dominate all the governance conversations. Um, so we we want to see that decentralize even further over time. So I mean, we'll see where things go, but we're we're definitely going to be here to help uh, build out the ecosystem. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Rob. And I'll stay with you, Rob, for this uh, next question here. Um, so the Horizon DAO pays a good amount of Zen to the special council. Is it really necessary when we don't see publicly some of their contributions? Um, I hope to see more involvement when Horizon 2.0 comes. Um, so, uh, like, I, I think um, the huge thing for us as an ecosystem is we have a DAO now. Um, so we we kind of always behaved in a way, and we were an early kind of um, proponents of decentralized governance when Zen Cash launched. Um, like, I remember Ralph and I working through. Um, our ideas on on early governance. Ralph had like much more sophisticated ideas of governance than than I did at the time. But like what we have today in, in the modern version of Web three is a DAO, and you know I, I marked the launch of our DAO as a major success for our ecosystem uh, when we did it um, last year. I think time flies. Sorry, <laughs> I think it was last year we officially launched the DAO as as a community, and. Um, you know, the DAO has an, its own organizational structure, and I'm super happy to say that that org structure is completely separate and distinct from Horizon Labs. And as part of that governance structure, um, you know, like we obviously have the Zen IP um, governance system for the community where we have uh, very explicit, you know, we have a discussion forum, we have very explicit proposals that any changes to the ecosystem, use of resources or you know, technical changes, or, or probably other things as well have to be proposed, the community has to have time to discuss them in an open forum, and then we all vote on it. And Zen is the governance token for voting. But still, like organizationally, we have, um, you know, like it, its own like governance or bylaws for, um, you know, the, the organization of the DAO itself. We have a foundation, um, a Horizon Foundation that it basically administers um, certain functions for the ecosystem, you know, and, and is directed by the DAO as well. And then as part of the governance, we have a special council. And the point of the special council is really to be kind of like an overarching like oversight for, okay, let's make sure that crazy things don't happen. And again, like I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not speaking from like the legal perspective of you know, the point of a special council. But strategically, a special council provides additional oversight to make sure we don't do anything crazy in terms of Zen, Zen IPs. Like I'm not going to submit a Zen IP that I don't know, goes and, and violates some, some laws in a horrible way. Um, and a special counsel makes sure that that doesn't happen and to make sure that the governance and bylaws of, of the DAO are actually being um, adhered to. It, it makes sure that certain procedural functions and how we vote are being adhered to. Um, and that's a really good thing. Now, on top of that, um, special counsel members, you know, we, we all have expectations that they're going to contribute in any way they possibly can to growing the Horizon ecosystem. I would say this special counsel, like, they do a lot that you guys just don't see. And, and I know about it just from some conversations that I, that I have with the foundation, with special council members directly, you know, whenever there's opportunities for us to interact. And they do a lot actually behind the scenes. Um, so I, I'm actually happy with them. Um, and I, I think they're, they are actually serving exactly what the role that they're supposed to do. And they're, they're going in different instances above and beyond. And I'll, I'll cite some instances here. So 
Uh, we as a community had a bit of a crisis earlier in the year when um, some, you know, Binance, for instance, uh, tagged us with a monitoring tag for Zen. And, and this was a crisis because they, they tagged us for being a privacy coin, even though as a community, we had um, voted to disable um, the privacy features last year. Um, it turned out not to be good enough for Binance and, and not good enough for some other exchanges. And there was a bit of a, a crisis here because um, you know, Zen, the, the currency of our ecosystem, the lifeblood of our ecosystem, was at risk of being delisted from the, its major sources of exchange. And the special counsel came together immediately and you know, started working through that crisis um, you know, to make sure that the community could actually pass additional Zen IPs in an expedited manner. So that's just one example of how they actually do come together quite a bit behind the scenes to make sure that key things happen and the community is taken care of. Um, finally, I'll, I'll just say that you know, these guys all came together to volunteer to be, um, you know, like the, the bootstrapping council for our DAO. And, and that's cool. But like, guys, remember, um, you know, every every SC position has, um, you know, um, uh, a term limit. And then everything's going to be going to community voting um, it, as we go forward. This was a bootstrapping special counsel, and I'm personally extremely grateful for them for stepping up and serving in the in the role and the capacity that they are. I do think that as an ecosystem with the DAO, we absolutely should have a special counsel um, going forward. So I, I'm very much in favor of it, and I think that this this SC has done uh, a good job. So I'll, I'll uh, stop there. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, to jump into the next question, I'll direct this one to Dom. And then, of course, Rob, if there's anything to add, please feel free to jump in. Um, can you give ideas for apps that can be built on Horizon 2? Will it be like the ZK Sync ecosystem, for example? Yeah, so uh, I really like this question. I think there's a lot of insight you could get about uh, the space from this question. Um, I think it's really important to note that there there is a clear distinction between a protocol like ZK Sync and one uh, like Horizon 2. And there are uh, significant differences between the two. Um, firstly, ZK Sync is a layer two. Horizon 2 is a layer one. Um, you know, that, that being that layer twos get their security from the, the layer one. So they have to build bridges to the layer one to maintain that security. Um, Horizon 2 will have its own staking mechanism. They will have a consensus mechanism. You know, layer twos don't necessarily have that. Um, now, uh, the the use case for a layer two is, is was really uh, focused on throughput, transac transaction throughput. That's the, the problem they're solving for, essentially. Uh, any application that requires like uh, a, a lot of transactions, which would be ultimately expensive, you would use a layer two. Now, uh, Horizon 2 is a, is a bit different. While you could technically use it to enhance throughput, uh, it's really more than that. It's, uh, it's solving for a different problem, uh, not necessarily transaction volume, but uh, computational load, right? So any any application that would require a heavy amount of computation um you know is something that zk uh you know so, sort of solves for right so really uh what the use cases that you would use uh, horizon 2 for that you try to solve problems for are like any applications that would require you to use uh zk in a way that is maybe not is not really for transaction volume, but for other things. Like if you wanted to uh, mask uh, algorithm for like an AI uh, and, you know, an end user would want to know that the model for that AI is acting appropriately, a ZK proof could be used for that. Um, a ZK proof could be used for certain areas within uh, trading platforms. If you wanted to obfuscate, like maintain your own strategy on a trading platform, uh, and ZK could be used for gaming, uh, things that don't necessarily have, like, I think the use case for gaming has been primarily for, like, transaction volume, but there are other things in gaming uh, of which you need a ZK, right? Um, and in, in that sense, there are things like Fog of War, if you're trying to 
sort of hides certain things uh, or actions within a game, you know, that, that has nothing to do with really transaction volume, but it requires a ZK proof. So uh, layer one and layer, uh, a layer, a layer two, like ZK sync is solving, is using ZK uh, technology to enhance uh, transaction volume, but something like Horizon 2 is doing uh, a bit more than that. It's solving for any situation in which you would need to use ZK, uh, which would normally require a significant amount of like computation. And that's a problem we're essentially solving for uh, with Horizon 2. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Tom. And I'll stay with you for this uh, next question here. Um, when will we see ideas for proposed tokenomics for the remaining supply of Zen? Yeah, so um, the the tokenomic strategy is current, currently being investigated and researched, and the the, pro, the proposal uh, will not contemplate changing the the current token supply. Um, the plan will eventually be presented to the DAO, uh, and will be voted on. Perfect, perfect. And jumping into the, the next question here, um, again, I'll, I'll start it with you, Dom, and then Rob, please feel free to jump in with any additional thoughts. Um, how can the community boost interest in Zen both before and after the launch of Horizon 2? Consider incentivizing developers with Zen, creating reward contracts, pushing for major exchange listings, and ramping up marketing efforts. Um, if you could briefly touch upon how the community can help boost interest in Zen. Yeah, so I I could start off and then I'll, I'll pass it over to Rob. So like at the at the direction of the foundation, uh, part of what we're doing is actively investigating the DAP space, uh, those uh, specifically which require ZK. So we're actively researching, you know, uh, what, what are those decentralized applications that are going to make a significant impact? In, in relation to the question is about like how um, can we boost the interest of Zen? I think the best way to do that is to get applications being built on the ecosystem that really enhance its value. So uh, bringing on that new application, that maybe that trading application, getting, getting awareness out there, uh, for what the capability of the ecosystem is. And, um, you know, once activity is, is, uh, keeps increasing, increasing, you know, the value of the network will also increase. I could, I'll pass it over to Rob to add anything to that. Yeah. I'll just say the, the kind of big picture thing here is, um, guys, this is our ecosystem. So I, I think everyone has their own talent and skills and backgrounds that they can contribute in some way. But I'll echo what Don is saying is that at the end of the day, whether this ecosystem is successful or not, isn't going to be in you know, the short term movements of the price of Zen. It's going to be on the usage and utility of the network itself. Um, so let's focus on the applications. Let's focus on So we're building this ZK optimized DVM. So let's really start thinking like it, it, your contributions could be as simple as brainstorming with the rest of the community publicly on our forums. Uh, about what types of applications um, could be built on Horizon 2, right? That could be actually in itself, just this public discussion and discourse that goes around, what's the current state of ZK dApps that are out there today? What what are the, you know, the set of things that we think ZK would be best suited for uh, in Web3, maybe even off-chain uh, in ways that we can just start building on together? Uh, and thinking through what kind of applications would make sense with us. And then it could be things like, okay, well, there are ZK apps that are out there already, and let's start going out there as a community. And again, you have to think like owners here because we all are. This is a decentralized network. There are no single points of control. Like, think like an owner of the network and get out there and start, you join other ZK DAP communities, you know, join their, their projects, their discords, um, learn more about them and see what you know pain points they have and whether it would make sense for them to build on Horizon 2, right? So just, I, I think us being a focal point of, you know, like the two things that I see, uh, let's be like a fountainhead of ideas with each other. Let's brainstorm that. Let's not just sit back passively and rely on, you know, other people to come up with ideas for how people can use Horizon 2. Let, let's do this together. So let's fountainhead of ideas. 
and let's get out there. Let's spread out across the rest of Web3, especially the applicable parts of Web3. Maybe there, there are applications that right, aren't using ZK right now, but should be using ZK. It would make complete sense to be building on Horizon 2. So those are the things that I would say are most useful. And then, of course, like, like there's lots of other ways to contribute in different ways. You can run infrastructure. You can be a validator. You can delegate to a validator. You, you can do all sorts of things. Like you can just contribute to uh, awareness for making the rest of Web3 and you know the rest of the world aware of why Web3 and Horizon 2 in particular is important. Right, so these are all things. And I would say kind of you know dig deep internally and think about uh, what you can contribute and just get out there and start doing it. Amazing, amazing. Thank you both. Um, to move on to the next question here, and, and Dom, I'll direct this one to you. Uh, Tezos, for example, has staking on Coinbase. Have you reached out to Coinbase to talk to them about adding Horizon 2 to their staking list? If not, when will you and will Zen be supported on Coinbase? Will exchanges also support the ZKV claim process or eligibility so users can keep their funds on exchanges during the upgrade? Yeah, so uh, part of our, you know, uh, services to the ecosystem and, and supporting them, we're, uh, we have communication with the centralized exchanges to provide them the tools necessary for them to provide staking services to uh, their end users. And they will we'll be providing them the, the, the necessary tools in order to do that, whether that's them wanting to, to uh, stand up nodes themselves or it will even we could even provide ways in which they could delegate stake. Um, so um, when it comes to the zk uh, v claim, very very similar to the, to be uh, to the question we answered before. You know, we're, we're basically going to be able to provide them an ability to 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 disperse that uh, uh, th that that token to to its users. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Dom. And moving on to our last question here, um, and I'll, I'll start this one with Dom again. When will we see an actual proposal on the rewards or incentives for existing Horizon holders? I understand Q1 2025 is when it's supposed to go live, but when are we going to hear more specifics and not just wait and hope we hear something before January? Yeah, so I think uh, oh, that, that will become very clear uh, to users, uh, when it comes to rewards and incentives, when the when the tokenomics proposal is delivered uh, to the community, it will outline uh, how the incentive structure will be and the rewards as well. Rewards, uh, part of the incentive will be staking, but there will be other uh, likely be other ways in which uh, users could be incentivized. Perfect. Thank you, Dom. And that concludes all of the prepared questions that we have. So before I pass it over to both Rob and Dom to provide their closing thoughts, I just wanted to open it up to the live audience. If anyone has any questions that hasn't been addressed already during the AMA, please feel free to request to speak and we can bring you on up to get those questions answered. Alrighty. Well, it seems like we got all of the questions covered. So um, wanted to move on to some close, closing thoughts from both Rob and Dom. So maybe Rob, if you want to kick it off and give us some closing thoughts before we wrap up the AMA. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I, I, I want to bring it all together from where we started. And, and again, like we started this project as I think we were the third ZK project in crypto. Uh, with Zencash. So when you know we, we came together in late 2016 to, to think about building out Zencash and launching ultimately in you know May of 2017, uh, it was new fertile ground for ZK. And we did things in a way that was consistent with the ethos and just way of thinking um, in the early days of Bitcoin. Right? Because we were we were we we're OG. It was the reality of it. We did everything like what was really important back then was the idea of a fair launch. And I think fair launch is something that will probably, I mean, it is coming back now, but it definitely lost its luster over the last um, you know, years, I would say, with 
some really successful L1s and L2s that launched in, in ways that are, you know, just call, we'll, we'll just call them more modern ways. Uh, we launched in the old school way where every single Zen that exists today was mined. Um, and those mining allocations then were kind of you know, voluntarily sent per some, you know, the protocol towards different buckets, like for node operators to help again, secure the network um, to a treasury to actually be able to build things. Um, and this is un new, in it, 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 it's unique in today's market because like all the modern projects are launched in, in different ways that, you know, have designated allocations towards you know, different entities. Um, and I think that the way that we launched, it goes beyond just being charming. You know, the fact that we did this fair launch, it's actually, we're finding out um, really valuable to have like a massively distributed uh, coin that's been around for a really long time. And again, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not opining on kind of a regulatory, you know, friendliness or anything like that. Um, but this is, it, you know, um, a coin that's on par from like a, you know, a governor's perspective with like Bitcoin, right? And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare us in, in some deep ways to Bitcoin other than that we, we launched with that philosophy, that ethos in mind. And I think that that's really valuable. I also think that, you know, we, we should not undersell ourselves in it. Um, the markets infrastructure that we have here, the fact that Zen is, is listed on Binance, is listed on, you know, Coinbase, there's a Grayscale uh, product, the Grayscale Trust for Zen. These are major kind of markets infrastructure things that if you're launching a new project today, you just don't have. Um, so I'll tell you why I'm really excited about Horizon 2 is because we're launching kind of consider this like a relaunch of an, an old coin. This this OG third ZK project ever that had a fair launch that has honestly like ridiculously good markets infrastructure and reach and liquidity out there. And now it's it's focusing um, its next leg of life on the, the natural kind of implication of where we came from, like the heart of ZK. And we're getting to uh, a segment of the ZK market, you know, a, a ZK optimized EVM that just no one else is doing right now. And we can do it in, you know, in exactly the best way possible with exactly what we know from years of experience ZK application devs need and want. All right, so that's why I'm really excited is that everything is coming together from this really like OG, like massively distributed project that has ridiculously good markets infrastructure and reach to now having a singular point of focus, it just makes sense. And I think not only does it make sense, but ZK as a technology class itself is is uh, culminating. Uh, I, I think ZK's time is, is about to really come, actually. ZK has been in the industry since 2016, yes. Um, but now we have some serious innovation around, uh, across all parts of the ZK value chain from proof generation to hardware, to co-processors, to new algorith algorithms, new ways of doing things, new proof systems. And now like even like, a, you know, we have aggregation, we have uh, universal verification layers like ZK Verify. And now we're putting out there into this mix of kind of culminating technologies, uh, a ZK optimized DVM. Uh, for application developers. This is really exciting. And all of these things coming together simultaneously with Horizon 2 is uh, why, like, when I woke up this morning, I was really pumped for this AMA because, like, I think we're onto something big here, guys. Uh, and this is, like, what I consider, like, I see people every now and then on socials talking about Horizon Zen being a sleeping giant. I completely agree. And not because of some speculative reason, but I completely agree because I think we're doing everything right now. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, uh, thanks, Rob. Um, I'll probably be a, a little bit quicker, but I, I also share a lot of the same feelings uh, uh, that you have. Um, I think uh, what's kind of fascinating to me right now is that uh, ZK and blockchain together have reached like an inflection point at which you know they're both uh, capable of sort of working together, and there's uh, a lot of opportunity to create uh, uh, interesting products and there are a lot of solutions that could be, uh, solved, solving a lot of unmet needs in the, in the market in, this, in the, uh, web three market, uh, space, but also like, uh, other problems that have not really been solved yet for, for other industries. 
I think that there are a ton of use cases and, and it can actually uh, bring blockchain to uh, a place that it, it, it was always envisioning, but always kind of had a hard time getting to. So that's kind of the way I see it. Amazing. Amazing. Well, this was great. Thank you so much, uh, Rob and Dom, for participating. For everyone that joined, remember to stay tuned for more updates and developments from Horizon moving forward. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Horizon 2 white paper for a comprehensive look at all the exciting innovations. Thank you again for being here, and I hope you all have a great day.